it's Don, the Austin Professor here. I just wanted to uh, show a little helpful hint, I guess you could say, for those of you who take a lot of pictures and go through cameras and have issues with your cameras. Um, we take probably 100,000 or better photos every single year. Um, we've got many cameras because we've had issues with cameras in the past before. Probably the biggest issue for a lot of people is when you're taking your camera on and off tripods constantly, um, you're having issues with the mount, the tripod mount on the bottom. We've had the tripod mount stripped on cameras two or three times. Uh, first time I think we ended up just getting a new camera. Um, but that's before I learned of a, of a way to fix the issue. It, it doesn't fix the camera, but it, it makes the, the camera still usable. Um, I've added a secondary mount onto the bottom. Um, when the mount is stripped on the inside, the screw will not fit in there to mount it onto a tripod anymore. And that happens from people tightening it down too hard, because I believe this is just aluminum in there. And when you do that, it strips the inside screw grooves, so you can't screw in a screw anymore. Uh, most of the cameras, like a Nikon, um, most any Nikons that I see use the small sized mount uh, screw on the bottom of these. So what you can do is find the next size up. There's two standard sizes for the uh, cameras. And what we do, and I've done it twice now, it works fine. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, this is just one of our older cool picks. We use this for some clothing and some other issues. It still does high def and the whole works. It's got a decent pixel count. Um, but this is just like uh, one we let our kids use occasionally too. I've got a couple vintage or not vintage per se, but older cameras that we progressed through from when we started with eBay. Um, even on the 3300, the 5300 series, um, even the more expensive 7000 series cameras, they can be fixed. This is um, attachments here I bought off of eBay or uh, Amazon for like nine bucks delivered. And what it is, it's an adapter screw for switching from the small sized mount screw to the large size mount screw. All I did was screw in the next size up into the bottom of this, leaving uh, the other size stud on here. And what this kit comes with is another size that then screws into this and you can use the other size mount screw then back onto your tripod again. It's like basically an adapter to downsize or upsize your your mount hole on the bottom of the mount plate for your camera. This fix saves you a ton of money. This There's five of these in here. You can just buy one of these. It's like a dollar sixty or something if you order it from China. It'll take you a few weeks to get it. but. Or you can spend a couple bucks and get one off eBay, you know, locally. Um, I bought the five of them because I use these for other things too. But once it's in there, I just put a little Loctite in there, put the screw on, and then bolted this on, screwed this adapter back on. So now I'm right back up to being able to mount this on anything I want. It may look odd, but this is just a work camera. It's a workhorse when we used it, um, and literally it was a quick fix. If you took the camera in to have that mount plate, Fixed. It's over a hundred bucks from anywhere you go. Probably more than a hundred bucks at these days. That was when I looked last, which was three or four years ago. To get that out, you have to disassemble the entire camera to get to the mount plate in here. Um, you could screw a new one in there, whatever the case may be. But this is the easiest, quickest way I have found. If the hole isn't hasn't been widened enough because it hasn't been stripped far enough, you can always drill it out just a hair and then uh, screw in the bigger one that way. You're just changing the size of the mount plate in there. Do it cautiously if you haven't done it before to make sure you've got the space to drill into that so that you're not damaging the electronics of the camera. Um, we were lucky on both occasions to just be able to screw this in really tight and squeeze some Loctite in there. Um, I think we used JB Weld in the past, but Loctite was just as well on this, this one here. This has held up for two years plus. My son's used this for a long time. He uses this one for his kiln, and we use this sometimes outside with the dogs and stuff like that. Um, but this this is a quick fix. Again, if you had this sent out or wanted to fix the camera professionally, it's over a hundred bucks to do, and it just wasn't worth it. That's why the first time it happened, we bought a new camera, and then we learned or found another way around this. Um, this is just something I came up with. I figured it was worth a shot, and it sure enough, it did work. Um, another way to save this so it doesn't happen, we have dedicated cameras. We have many of the Nikon 5300 uh, series cameras. They're all dedicated ones just used for a certain tripod. Another one's dedicated to um, document shooting and photoing for uh, photos and trade cards and postcards. So when you have one dedicated, you're not taking it on and off the tripod as much. So the, the chances of you stripping that or over tightening it or something are, are a lot slimmer. And that's another reason why I like to have all my stuff done in-house and to be able to address all issues myself. 
Um, I would never lend somebody equipment or anything else like that if they're working or contract out. Um, this way I know how the camera's handled, I know what to do, and if it does break, I have these extra parts here that I can get. We buy all kinds of little uh, adapters and things like swivels for the tripod so you can turn it on an angle. If you have a good tripod and you don't want to spend the money to get a, a secondary tripod that you can uh, you know, shoot upright or sideways or whatever the case may be, buy yourself one of these little adapters. Now this one I got used. I only paid a dollar or something for it in a bag lot um, at, from one of my pickers. and It was something I could have sold, but I just kept it. Literally, I've got a camera bag full of lenses. I've probably got 20 or 30 lenses for our cameras. Um, macro, micro, um, wide angle, telephoto, zooms, everything that you can think of for the camera. All the parts are interchangeable when you have the same type of cameras. So that's why we buy the same cameras. Usually we got a discount when we bought multiples from the same person. So we actually got them cheaper as well too. The higher end cameras are able to be resold better too. So if you want to up yourself, you can always sell your, your used camera. But if you're going to be doing a lot of business like us, you're going to be taking 100,000 or more photos a year, minimum. And that's minimum. It's probably, we could be doing 125, 125,000 photos a year that this we're taking. Everybody all together takes for our business. Um, maybe it's even more than that. I've never caught, counted. Maybe I should to figure out how much wear and tear we're putting on the cameras. Um, but that's just part of doing business. That's what you want to look for. You're going to invest the money into a better camera because you're going to be doing that many uh, images. Don't do it right away when you're first starting off. I know a lot of people use their phones and things. I like to have you know actual full-fledged SLR cameras. Um, it's just me because I can use them for all kinds of stuff. We do artwork and, and we do some other types of videos too that we're working on. So. And I do, you know, some basic stop motion and things like that. So we want cameras that are going to be useful universally for us, not just for taking photos or not just for, you know, holding in my pocket and, and you, know, a, a, you know, a cell phone camera. We've got the money, you know, for investing into them, and it has increased and helped our business. The better photos you have, the better something's going to sell. So, um, But that's just a quick touch on, you know, a quick fix. It may not have happened to you, you may not have ever thought about it, but it has happened to us three times in the past. And I know many, many people, most everybody I know have had issues with this. And everyone I, I've talked to said the same thing, it's too expensive to have it fixed. Or, you know, why should I spend 100 plus to have it fixed on a camera that I only spent 200 on? I'll spend 200 and maybe add another 100 and buy a $300 camera next time. So, But you can save them, you can move on and save yourself some time, energy, and, and aggravation by just doing this to fix the mount issue. But uh, hopefully you at least learned something on the camera aspect of it. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't, and tell a friend.